Hi, welcome to this new series, brand new series. We will discuss real certification questions on AWS DevOps Engineer Professional. So this is the part one of this video series. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Let's move into the questions. Now, before I move into the questions, one thing I would like to say that this is also a very important certification. What I see in the cloud world is most of the certifications are linked to each other. Now, the price of this certification is 300 USD. It is a 180 minutes exam. That is three hours. You will be quizzed around 75 questions, either multi-choice or multiple response. You can use either Pearson View or PSI for certification. These are online proctored exams. So you can go physically into a test center or you can give it from your home. Now these are the topics around which you will be quizzed in this exam. If you see experience developing code, this is important. Um, automated infrastructures. And you should understand modern development and operations. You should understand the continuous delivery systems and methods. And if you want to automate implementation of security controls and governance process, you can you know, go through this certification contents. And last but not the least, ability to deploy monitoring metrics and logging systems on AWS. Now on this website, you will find this, you see this, download the exam guide. You can download it and you can also download the sample questions. In the exam guide, it gives you detail about how much percentage of topics should be covered from each areas. So there are six domains. And if you see the maximum questions asked is from SDLC automation, followed by configuration management and incident and event response. And for details around each of these, you can go through these sections, like what are being asked there. So if you see, these are very elaborate topics. And uh, this is an important exam. If you want to proceed as an architect, I would still suggest you should do this. And even if you are not from this field, like you are coming from on-premises, most of the certifications are important because each certification will give you a different flavor. So let's look at the questions. The first one says, like, which one is true about AWS being stock model? So first, we should understand what is this service called Beanstalk. Suppose you have a lot of code you need to move from dev to test and from test to prod. Now, this is a manual process and you do not want to invest in a manual process. If you are creating a CI CD pipeline, so what you want is from point A to point B, it should go automatically. If you consider uh, gas pipelines coming in from Iran to Bombay High, there are dedicated pipelines and there is a continuous flow. That is the concept used with CI CD pipelines that we will have these pipelines permanent as and when we have code ready, we will deploy it. So Beanstalk would help you with this kind of automated deployment and scaling of the web applications and services. See, in this case, you will see these options which are confusing, but always remember, you know, applications have many environments. If you consider this diagram and you have one web application, the web application can be on dev, test and prod. So there are many environments. And environments can have many deployments. For example, today you added one feature, you deployed that code in test and then in prod. Tomorrow, you are adding one more feature and again you are making this push from here to here. So what is happening is each environment is having many deployments. Hence, this is the right answer. Now let's move to the next question. 
this one is about DynamoDB. This is quizzing you around secondary key features. So global, there is a, something called global secondary index in DynamoDB. Let's look at it. So if you see this example, you have a global secondary index and then you see they are using a different partition key and they are using a different sort key. So we all know that when we create a primary key, it is a unique one and a unique index is also created. So that time the partition key and the sort key is same. But a lot of time you will have to fire queries on non-key attributes and that will do a full table scan, not an index scan, not good for your systems. That's why you build global secondary index. These are not primary indexes. Primary indexes are always major time on the primary key. So we are building secondary indexes so that if I am curing on the non-key attributes, you can create a global secondary index which will help you fast track it. Hence, this would be our answer. Let's look at the next question. Now, this is a question around API. If you see, list things and create things are API commands, actions. See, create thing, list things, these are a part of IoT. You see this AWS IoT, these are all the API actions that are used with IoT. Hence, it is pretty clear out of these options, IoT is the answer. Let's look at the next question. Now, this question is on Ansible. It is not a part of AWS, but it's a part of uh, hybrid cloud integration between Red Hat, Ansible, and AWS, which is in the syllabus for certification. And these are questions which are actually asked in the exam as, as well. So from an Ansible perspective, there is something called inventory system. You have different things that you can include in, in your inventories. What this question is asking is out of these options, what is it that you cannot include in your inventory? So this is a whole list of what can be included as a part of your inventory in Ansible. So the first one says, group variables if you see this organizing host and group variables is already a part of this hence this cannot be the answer let's look at host groups so we have something called host variables as well as hosts in multiple groups so this is also a part of the inventory so b cannot be an answer let's look at include wars we cannot spot include wars here so c looks to be a potential answer as this is not a part of the inventory system but let's look at d also children groups uh, i have something called default groups if i click this and if i go inside i can see it also has children groups Hence, I would say C would be the final answer. Let's look at the next question. Question 5. So, this question is asking about if you have EC2 instances and you have to launch it. And when you are launching it, you want certain uh, configurations to be applied automatically when it is getting launched. Especially in the auto scaling group. In the auto scaling group, what happens is you start with a base EC2 instance of suppose three instances and you have two instances in an auto scaling group. So the moment the load increases, the two extra instances get kicked off. And when they kicked off, you also want that they should not have a vanilla kickoff. They should all also do some configuration once it is kicked off. From that perspective, always remember user data script is what we always use and we store these scripts in S3 buckets so that EC2 instances in the auto scaling group when they are getting warmed and activated it will go to S3 bucket and it will use that script to run 
that is important thing now other options it says is you uh, securely copy the content from a running ec2 instance see when an auto scaling group and an ec2 instance is getting launched there will be no time to copy from the existing ec2 instance to this new instance first second it can happen that the existing ec2 instance died because of some issues so then it is not available for copying no? so that is not an option now c if you see c it says use script wire cfn edit to pull content hosted in elastic cache cluster we are not using elastic cache here this is of no use because the question doesn't say anything about elastic cache right elastic cache is used from a caching perspective on the top of databases we don't have databases as well here so c is totally wrong d is talking about pulling the host from your on-premises server now where do we have on-premises included in the question so why will we you know, choose this as an answer so d is also wrong e says that you use this data script to pull host content hosted on on-premises server again there is no on-premises server so this is totally wrong hence our final answer would be b option b please subscribe to my channel this brings us to the end of part one i will be posting many more such contents see you in the next part I will be posting many more questions around this topic and this certification exam. Stay tuned. See you in the next part. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel Cloud Group.